Skyhawk PDC controllers offer a surprising amount of features, and in this video, I will go over a few of those surprising things you can do with your Skyhawk controller. So let's get to it. Sky has a great range of PVC controllers, from small to large, and they are all running Unisketch, which is the software platform you find in all our controllers. And the smallest one, the PVC Wiz, is great for a light desktop control experience, while our flagship controller, the PVC Extreme, is born to sit in the hands of dedicated PVC operators working long days. And in between these extremes, you'll find the PVC Fly and the PVC Pro and RackFusion Live. And today I would like to start with RackFusion Live as this is the controller that demonstrates best how flexible Skyhoy controllers really are. There are two things that I would like to highlight on this controller. The one is that it is really operating two different types of devices at the same time. We have on the left side the switcher control. It's currently connected to an ATEM switcher. And on the right side, you find the PVC control where you can control multiple cameras, of course. So that's the one, one of the um, flexible things about Skyhoy products that you can integrate. Integrate. So having user-friendly experiences, not two different surfaces, but it's all boiled into one single piece of equipment. And that allows you to set it up, you know, really easy for volunteers and, and who else are operating your productions. The second thing is that a PVC controller is not just a PVC controller, and you'll find that on all of our products. We have integrated the unique features of your cameras. So today we have a new tech camera here, and the specific settings this camera has is actually implemented in our controllers. And that is true for all the brands and models that you'll find. So let's see how this integration works. Let's first look at the ATEM side of the switcher. We operate the usual color schemes with green and red for preview and program. So when I select sources here, they are not live yet. That happens when I press the cut button. You see these colors are changing uh, around. So that's the basic operation. You're probably familiar with that. Then we also have auto if I want to have a transition, uh, automatic transition. Now, take a look at these buttons up here. I have decided to show or to, to make it available to the operator to change which kind of transition he um, has when he uses the fader or the auto transition. So you can see I can actually change that. And if you didn't know, we have something called four-way button. So as I press the sides of this button, you see that I go forth and back and I am thus able to navigate a range of values. The same is true for the um, speed of the auto transition. Before you saw that I have a transition of about a second, but if I press and hold this one, you can see that I can increase the number of frames. And as I now press, you see it is going to be, sorry, uh, we need to go to the mixed transition because that's the one assigned to this one. But the mixed transition is going to be slower as you can see, probably around those 70 frames that I, I was hitting here. So this is one of the great things of our controllers as well. Very unique. I don't see that anywhere else that the four-way buttons allow a single button to actually adjust values forth and back. That's pretty cool. Then we have our switcher controls up here and, um, oh, sorry, uh, keyer controls. And if you use the home key, you can navigate to auxiliary channel output selection. You can also use this as a four-way button for that. We have uh, media player uh, selection, macro execution, um, audio volume, which is also four-way button operatable. And finally, some picture-in-picture -picture settings and DVE manipulation over there. So that was the switcher part of this. And you see, it's not everything the ATEM switcher does, but it's the things that I wanted to have in my configuration. So that's flexible, right? You can remove and you can add the features you need. And that's very, very helpful to create user-friendly experiences focused on exactly what you are doing. And if we look at the PDC side of the controller, we find the same flexibility here. I have two cameras connected. The one is over here. Let's just see it operate or move, right? So you can see I'm able to, to pan and zoom it around with um, my, my little target in mind here. So let's just stop it here. If I change to a different camera, you probably won't see that, but I can also pan this around and uh, adjust settings for it. So what I'm doing right now is I'm pressing this button over here and you see that I'm cycling through the various options that are available to me for these cameras. They can do more than this controller currently gives you access to, but I have decided to break it out for exposure mode, for white balance, 
for uh, brightness, contrast, saturation, and sharpness settings. And finally, some speed settings and focus settings for this camera. So uh, let's go back to camera one, the one that we can actually see, and look at exposure mode. So it's currently in auto. I think it's a little bit overexposed, at least with the screen I'm looking at, and I would like to change that. So by changing this one, you can see I can go to auto, uh, sorry, to manual, to shutter mode, to iris mode, and something called whiteboard mode, and um, smooth automation. Uh, auto mode. I think that's it. So, um, by the way, the point here is that not every camera has smooth auto mode. The new tech camera does. We implemented that and you'll find different features in other cameras. Now, let's go to manual because now you can see the pictures differently exp um, exposed and I can of course change the iris as you would expect from this display and knob. And here we have shutter speed. Let's say that you want shutter speed to not be operatable by the user. We can actually remove it from this knob so it's not available and only iris would be. Or we can swap it around or entirely you know, remove all of these settings if we wanted to. That's a part of the flexibility. And then finally gain here. Now, um, this is obviously too much. Let's just go to um, something that we can agree. It, this is pretty good. I like this. Okay, let's move on to white balance. So you see white balance in here. It's in auto mode. I can change this. We are now at indoor mode. We are now at outdoor mode. One push. Let's try to push and see if it does some adjustments here. It does when you press and hold and it picks something that I definitely don't like. So it's great that I can go all the way to manual mode and then I can tweak red and blue gain. So if you are really into the details of this, you can uh, tweak this a little bit. And I think I would like to add a little bit of red here. I like it about here. So let's see if the blue gain, no, 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 no. That's the wrong direction. And that was too far in this direction. Actually, I like it about here. This is not a grading monitor I'm looking at, but I like what I just got and this is available as manual adjustment of your white balance. And I could go on like that. The point is we have specific features of the camera broken into your PTC control and that's only a Skahoy thing that you can do that and experience that across so many brands of cameras. Next we have the PTC Fly and that is set up to control multiple brands, in this case a bird dog and a new tech camera. Camera number one is still my new tech camera. And uh, let's just zoom in on our little setup over here with the um, various objects. So we'll just do that. And then I can change over to Bird Dog, which is camera number one on the fourth button here. And I can also zoom in on the same setup. So as you can see, I have control of both cameras here. We have camera two and three, and also a second Bird Dog camera here. They are color coded differently with, uh, yeah, because we um, want to distinguish the two sets of cameras in this way. So that's what this configuration offers us. But uh, it also means, as I now look at the settings menu up here, that the settings that we see uh, for the BirdDog camera, uh, sometimes they look the same, but they are still with the specific ranges of values for the BirdDog camera. Uh, so uh, typically the exposure mode and the white balance menu is pretty much the same across multiple brands and cameras and so on. While if you look uh, here, we have um, auto exposure speed, uh, chroma suppress, noise reduction, and gamma mode for the bird dog camera. And uh, then we have focus mode and uh, such adjustments on, on the fi final menu here. If I go over to the new tech camera, we'll find that um, we have um, brightness, contrast, saturation, and sharpness on the third menu, while the fourth menu, once again, looks like the bird dog. So the effort has been on trying to create a menu which is the same for the two cameras, while certain features were different from the two, and they were in this case found on the third page of the menu of settings. So uh, I have PTC control with a joystick of both uh, sets of camera brands. And now I wanna play a little bit with the uh, settings of the cameras. I think um, you, you can see when you compare the two cameras that they are slightly different. And um, I would like to tone the, um, the cameras more or less the same. So I will move over to my white balance page uh, for first the, um, let's take the bird dog camera first. So here, here we are at the auto white balance and I generally, I think we would be a little bit careful with that. So we'll just go over to manual mode and then see if we can, uh, no, that was too little. Uh, let me see. Okay, I like to have a warm image like this. Um, let me see. Okay, 
like this. Okay, I will go with that. And then I move over to camera number one, which is my new tech camera. And on this one, I also am in manual mode right now. And um, I want to tone it a little more warm than the bluish uh, tint that I had just uh, from before. So let me just uh, go in here and um, play a little bit with the colors. That was a little bit too much. Um, let me see too much green there. And about this. Now I'm, I'm just looking at the, the two uh, Chinese warriors here. And uh, we still see that the background color needs to change to uh, the black level on the cameras. And that's not a part of the white balance thing. But here I tried to tone the colors of the white balance to match on the warriors in, in this case. And you can see that this is possible across the two different types of cameras. Uh, luckily for both of these, they have white balance mode with red and blue gain pretty much the same as many Visca cameras have. So uh, that looks very much the same to the operator. So basically this is an example of how two brands can be controlled from the same PC controller with a Skyhoy device. Finally, let's talk about a few nice features about Skyhoy controllers in general. These are always made with really nice machined aluminum, sturdy, made for the industrial road life. They are also sprinkled with crisp OLED displays. Why? Because the flexibility is only provided if a button is easily relabeled to the function that it might have as you, you have a shift level that you activate and so on. So the, the uh, OLED legends you find on buttons and knobs are super important for Skyhawk controllers as well. That underpins our insistence on creating these flexible broadcast controllers. Secondly, or thirdly, we have a one cable solution. So in the world of IP connectivity, these devices are always PoE powered. Single cable for data and power. And finally, these products are made in Denmark.